Do you think if other religions are wrong then? Right, I don't believe they're wrong per se. Okay. I believe they're wrong in the form they're in today. Yeah. Let me explain. I believe that Moses, mm -hmm. Abraham, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, mm -hmm. I believe they're all prophets of God. Yeah, yeah. I believe those messengers came with guidance. Mm -hmm. They came with revelation. I believe Moses came with the Torah. Mm -hmm. I believe Jesus came with the Injil, the Gospel. Mm -hmm. I don't believe those scriptures in their form today yeah. are preserved as God sent them. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I believe that those scriptures have been corrupted mm. and, to, and in fact it's not a belief I hold that the Christian clergy, the Christian uh, uh, you know, and, the, and the Jewish rabbis, mm. the historians have looked into this mm. um, and they've come to the conclusion that there are different versions of the Bible. Mm. Yeah? They have different manuscripts which one's right, which one's wrong, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. And I believe that man has added yeah. into the Bible, into yeah. the modern day Bible. Yeah. So for me, I don't believe that the Christian and Jewish uh, religions are 100% mm. as God wanted them to be. So are you more accepting of the Buddhism way of life? So again, as, as Muslims, we believe every nation mm -hmm. across the globe God sent a messenger mm -hmm. we believe every nation was given okay. a messenger to call them to mm -hmm. the right path mm -hmm. the path of God mm -hmm. the, the way of submission to the one true creator yeah because ultimately human beings will only prosper if we adhere to the guidance of the one who created us mm -hmm. yeah does that make sense yeah. so with regards to Buddhism um, I don't know the intricacies of Buddhism, mm. but what I do know is ultimately, at this moment in time, there's only one religion which has been preserved mm. from the time it was revealed to the time we're in now. Mm. And that's one of the miracles yeah. of the Qur'an, yeah. right? The, we believe the Prophet, Muhammad, um, the Prophet Moses, mm. um, he split the sea. Mm. I believe that. Mm. I believe that. Mm. It's in the Qur'an. I believe that Jesus cured the blind. Mm. I believe he was born miraculously. Mm. No man touched Mary. Mm. I believe that. Okay. However, if I come to you today, Ingrid, mm. as a Christian, mm. and I say you must believe in Christianity mm. because Jesus did this, this and this, mm. and you need to believe, mm. I don't feel that that's a fair, um, that's a fair reason Mm. or a, a good reason for you to accept Christianity. Mm. The same way if I came to you and I said, Moses parted the sea, and that's why you must believe Judaism. Mm. I don't believe that's a, a good reason mm. for you to believe in that religion. Mm. Because ultimately you didn't see Jesus do what his miracles. You didn't see Moses do his miracles, right? Now we believe those miracles were done through God. God did those miracles mm. through his messengers, mm. right? However, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he also had miracles. We believe he split the moon. Mm -hmm. And there's research on it. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't come to you and say, Ingrid, believe in Islam mm -hmm. because Muhammad, peace be upon him, split the moon. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. You're going to say, well, it's not really a reason for me to believe. Mm -hmm. However, the Quran is a book revealed 1,400 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah? To a man who lived in the desert of Arabia. Inside the Quran, there are many miracles and signs, mm -hmm. which when you read with a clean heart and an open mind, you understand, okay, mm -hmm. it's a bit hard for me to say that this is just a coincidence. Yeah. Now, there's, there's linguistic miracles within it. Mm -hmm. There's scientific miracles. It speaks about the Big Bang. It speaks about the uh, intricate stages of embryology mm -hmm. within, uh, with, within the life cycle of, of, of a human being. It speaks about, you know, the, the, um, the movement of the solar system. It speaks about the expanding universe. Mm -hmm. It speaks about oceanography, mm -hmm. ocean, uh, oceanography, astronomy, astrology. Yeah. Yeah. There's so much within there. And then it goes on further. The Quran actually says, um, If you're in doubt about the revelation that we've sent upon our, slave, our servant, Muhammad, peace be upon him, Bring one chapter like it, mm. right? Mm. And if you're not able to, and you will never be able to, then fear the fire of your Lord, 
right? So the Quran is actually giving you a litmus test. It goes on to say, if this was a revelation from anyone other than your Lord, you will find many contradictions within it. So, Ingrid, there's a challenge for you. Thank you. If you'd like to disprove the Quran, feel free. Shukran. Shukran. Thank you very much. So, <laughs> okay, for Al-Hala. Kaifa, Kaifa Halak. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. You've been yeah. practicing your Arabic? Yeah. Yes, I've been to many Arabic countries okay. in my, my job years ago and I, I found it interesting yeah. to um, learn a little ah, bit. It's it good. goes it's a long good. way. Yeah, of course, um, it's courteous. Rane, yeah. um, Yamil, yeah, yeah. Uh, Terra la camera. <laughs> that means don't look at so, the camera. Uh, so so how, how do you feel about what I've said to you so oh. far? It's interesting. It's it's, um, it's more than um, the little I very little I knew about yeah. it. Um, it's more than you just explained all the extra bits. So it's more in it, and I wanted to know a bit more about the Excellent. Quran Excellent. and Islam. Okay. So I will I will read this with interest. Excellent. Yeah. So there's there's just one other thing I'll leave you with is the life of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Mm -hmm. You see what a lot of people don't realize. There's these terms, and I'm and I'm not saying that you you uh, you um, believe in any of this, but you know there, there's people who say he was a warmonger, he was this, he was so, such as that. Yeah. If you actually look at the life of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, he lived a very very simple humble life. He, he, he gave, he, we believe he was the example for all of mankind. So he personified humility. He personified integrity, honesty. He was known before he was given revelation and he was a prophet of God before that time. He was known as a sadiq al amin He was known as the truthful one. To the extent where all the people of, of, of that part of Arabia would come to him to judge for them. Because he was the trustworthy one. If they would go, if they were leaving on business, they would leave him with his with their belongings to look after, because they knew he was the trustworthy. Right? He has certain characteristics that you say, okay, you know, for example, for 13 years he was persecuted, he was tortured. Not he, he wasn't tortured. His followers were tortured. Uh, his his uh, uncle was killed. His wife died through persecution you know he, he one time he was at the Kaaba at the um, uh, in Mecca mm -hmm. which is where we pray to mm -hmm. uh, we direct our prayer to that direction and he was in prostration mm -hmm. and one of the enemies of Islam came and threw over him the entrails of a camel mm -hmm. so the intestines over him mm -hmm. And his daughter came and she, you know, she, she was picking them and she said, why you do this to my father when he only wants you to worship one God, yeah. right? So after suffering years of persecution, he left Mecca and went to Medina and he established an army and he went back into Mecca and this was the opening of Mecca. And at that time, the Meccans knew, okay, we don't have anything to fight him with now. It's done. He's going to come back. He's going to kill us all. And he went into Mecca with his head down in humility. And he came to the Meccans who had oppressed him for years. And he said, today is not the day for revenge. Today is the day for forgiveness. Take your things, take your belongings and leave. I don't want no revenge from you. Like, these are things, you know, for a man who lived in the desert of Arabia 1,400 years ago, he slept on a, on a straw mat. Just like, just like that one we have there. He slept on the straw mat and the companions would come to him and say, Oh, messenger of God, like at least take something soft to sleep on. He said, I don't need anything from this world. You know, he would have markings on the side of his body where he slept. And at the same time, he was the commander of one of the greatest armies, arguably, that ever, you know, to the extent whereby, you know, he, he, he gave us uh, rules and rules for war. You know, if you go in, if you're in war, don't kill innocent children. Don't kill women. Don't kill the priests or the rabbis. Don't destroy places of worship, yeah. even for the other faith. The Christians and the don't destroy their places of worship. Don't kill their animals. Don't damage their trees. Um, what are the others? There's 10 altogether. But essentially, he gave a framework and a guidance, which if you look at, you know, the way the world is today, they could do with some of that. So, um, um, with, with um, the extreme 
people under the umbrella saying they're Islam and doing these atrocities. Um, what Which ones you, are we being? What, can um, we be specific? Um, like the um, the ones that were chopping off all people's heads of you. So ISIS. ISIS, yeah. ISIS so in, in Syria. Yes. Yeah, they have the looked that the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him actually said, he said there will come from amongst us people. Mm. who will essentially, they, they, they are called the Khawarij. Mm. They are the people who have left the, mm. the congregation. Mm. And they will do these atrocities. Yeah. And he said every time they, they come up, so what, they what will be think, cut back. So what do uh, people who worship or um, worship Islam, um, do you think, what do you think most of them think about those people that have gone off the, uh, off the trail? Oh, we, um, I think if you look across the globe, 99% of Muslims condemn them. Yeah, yeah. Like, Islam has nothing to do with it. No, look, but it's, it's just... You, uh, but I'm not allowed. Even in war, even in war, yeah. Like, there is no justification for, for example, burning somebody alive. Yeah, no, yeah? no, no. But, I mean, um, sorry, I have a bit of a... No, no feel free. I, no, no, feel I free. I have had an operation that makes me occasionally sort of lutter um, a bit. Um, uh, um, Take your time, relax, okay. don't worry. Um, so... I what I was going to say now. Um, so we're talking about war and yeah. the extremists and whether the Muslims yeah. agree with them or not. No, no, I realise that, but, you know... Um, Tip of your how tongue. How do you think they're going to... You're going to uh, sort of sec, 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 separate yourselves from what people think, uh, sort of ignorant people think about the few people that... Uh, yeah, no, through my actions. Is, yeah, Islam. Ingrid, through my actions, okay. through, my, through, my, through my good deeds, through yeah, my mannerisms, yeah, yeah. through the way I interact with my neighbours, yeah, through yeah. the way I interact with the people around yeah. me. You know, if I'm on the tube and, and there's somebody who, who's older than me, I'll stand up and give yeah, them yeah, the seat. Yeah? yeah? And it's... Uh, and actively, you know, being Muslim, mm. but being... So, so when somebody looks at me, nine times out of ten, you'll guess that I'm a Muslim. Mm -hmm. So if I do something, you know, I carry the responsibility yeah. of the religion of Islam. Yeah. yeah and, and, and I suppose, by extension, every Muslim, mm. you know, through education, yeah. you know, through educating our youth so to try and... the answer to ignorant people's um, opinions, say, for instance, the British Lots and lots of British people are ignorant about religions, and I'm so frustrated with them not understanding or um, just being um, just being tolerant yeah. of other yeah. people's differences. There's so little differences, yeah. but people are generally more or less the same. Yes, um, just their ideas. Yeah, of course, are of course, are, are very different sometimes. But then the, the, the most extreme people are the most ignorant. 100%. Um, and they are the ones that need to be uh, generationally um, educated. Uh, uh, do you think uh, that is through schools or how? Or, or look, the reason why we're here, one of the reasons why we're here is to do this. Okay. You know, this outreach, it go, you know, uh, many, many people benefit. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, we, yeah. We, talk to, we talk to hundreds of people so on a daily basis. When you. Accept, hundreds of people you on a daily basis. Islam, you don't lose Jesus. Okay. You just so learn you the term through Islam. Yeah, okay. You know? Because essentially, a lot of people don't realize that it's an article of faith yeah. uh, for me as a Muslim mm -hmm. I can't be a Muslim if I don't believe in Jesus no, no, yeah. okay. right okay. likewise Moses likewise any of the prophets of God I believe I believe in all of the messengers of God yeah. and I can't actually be a Muslim if I don't so many Christians actually don't realize that yeah, yeah. you know like I say I believe that no man touched Mary she she he was born of a, a virgin birth I believe that, oh, yeah, yeah. but many Christians don't realise. Yeah, no, you know, yeah. so maybe I, it's through schooling. Yeah, then, uh, then get then it, and explaining when they're really little. Yeah, I mean whether without it's through without people pointing the finger, say you're indoctrinated. Yeah, having the access uh, to all different. I mean the irony. Religion. The irony of it is, Ingrid, as as Muslims, right? We so right now the hot topic is Muslims hate Jews. We're anti-Semitic, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. The irony of it is. Yeah that 
Jews don't believe it. When Jerusalem was conquered by the Crusades, in fact, before that, when at the opening of Jerusalem by the second Caliph of Islam, so we're talking about uh, 7th century here, right? When they entered into Jerusalem, the second Caliph, his name was Omar, or Omar, and when he came in, he needed to pray, right? He needed to pray. So as he's come into the city, he said, I need to establish my prayer. The Christian priest at the time said to him, you're more than welcome to use our church. Now, as a Muslim, it's permissible for me to pray there. But he said the opposite. He said, I won't pray in your church because should the people who come in after me here that I prayed here, they would take it for themselves or they would want to take it for themselves. So to avoid anything like that ever happening, I'm not going to pray in the church. When Omar asked the Christians at the time, where are the Jews? The answer he got was, well, we drove them out of the city. We killed them all, right? It was on Omar the second caliph of Islam, it was on his authority that he ordered for 20 some thousand Jews to be brought back in to the Holy Land, to Jerusalem, because this was their land as well. So as Muslims, we don't have a problem with a Christian being here. And if you look at the, if you look at the history of, of that area of land, that part of the world, of Jerusalem, the most peaceful time, and I'm not saying there was no problems when Muslims ruled, but the most peaceful time was when Muslims ruled over it. Why? Because we give the Christians their due rights to worship, to have their place of worship, to be Christian. No problem. To the extent where even, you know, some of the people, um, they, would have, um, they would have their places where they would make their alcohol and keep it to yourself, do your thing. Yeah, as long as you're not coming out and telling Muslims to drink alcohol and doing this as long as it's do 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 you whatever you do in your own home it's, it's up to you if you well, want to I, I'm, I'm sort of really I'm really on the same page with you know just being understanding with different people yeah and, um, um, but, but ultimately I, yeah. it's about you yeah and your relationship with your creator yeah yeah you believe from what we've spoken about, does it, it make sense to you mm. that there is, it makes more sense that there is a creator than there isn't a creator, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Now it's just understanding, okay, who is that creator now, right? Yeah. If you're sincere, which I, I have every uh, belief that you are, you know, you'll, you'll become a Muslim. Okay. Because yeah. that, that's the natural progression. Yeah. When someone learns about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, yeah. learns about the miracles of the Quran, learns about, you know, what we, I mean, Islam bought women's rights. You know, in the seventh century Arabia, women had no rights, right? They would bury their daughters alive because they didn't want them, right? Islam gave women the right to own property. The Islam gave women the right to not, you know, that in, in Islam, a woman doesn't have to take the surname of her, of her husband, right? That Islam uh, honored women. Yeah. The, a man came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and he said, what's the most honorable thing for me to do? Like, who, who, who should I give my um, servitude and my uh, obedience to the most? Mm -hmm. The Prophet Muhammad said, your mother. Mm -hmm. The man said, who next? The Prophet وسلم, said, your mother. The man said, who next? He said, your mother. Mm -hmm. And he said, who next? He said, then your father. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he elevated the rank of a woman. Mm -hmm. Right? He elevated. It's just, you know, people, are, it's, it's just people twist things around so much. Yeah. Unfortunately, I've got a very heavy bag and I've got to get to my father's place. Would, Take that. I, my it. father is very interested in learning about various things and he's really interested in people as well okay. and different cultures. He's very Amazing. well traveled. Am I able to take him? Of course you are. Of course you are. Please. You. Thank Please you. feel free. Absolute pleasure. And we're here every Saturday. Okay. If you ever have any every questions, Saturday. every Saturday, yeah. Okay. If you ever have any questions, anything you'd like to know, anything you're unsure about, yeah. pop down. Thank All you. the best. Ingrid, Thank you. I don't shake hands. Okay, okay. And there's a reason for that. Okay. Um, if you look at the Queen of England, mm -hmm. if somebody was to come to the Queen of England and greet her, what would you do? You'd courtesy. Yeah. Yeah. So as Muslims, we believe that every woman 
Hmm? is above that. I have no right to touch you. Okay, okay. I have no, like, obviously my wife, my sisters, my, my, my mom, that's different. Hmm. I have that relationship. But somebody outside of that, hmm? I don't have the right to touch. Now, if it, and that's not just non-Muslim women. Hmm? That's Muslim and non-Muslim women. It doesn't matter, okay. right? So it's, it's, also I think there's some scientific research that's been done that even the touch of a hand, you know, this is the start of where desires get, you know, accelerated. And if you look in the society we are, so Islam sort of nips that in the bud. Um, but yeah. respectfully, yeah. thank you so much.